Hello, and welcome to the second episode of the Software Carpentry Lecture on Version Control. This episode introduces the basic workflow you'll use when working with a version control system. To keep things simple, we'll assume that someone has already set up a repository for you. A later episode will show you how to do this yourself. Dracula <laughs> and Wolfman have just been assigned to the Universal Monsters Project and need to figure out where they should hide their secret lair. The Mummy has already put some notes in a version control repository on the universal.softwarecarpentry.org server. Its full URL is https colon double slash universal.softwarecarpentry.org slash monsters. Every repository has an address like this that uniquely identifies the location of the master copy. It's Monday night. Dracula sits down at his computer and runs Smart SVN. This is a subversion client, i.e. a program that runs on your machine and knows how to move files back and forth to a repository located on a server. There are lots of other graphical clients out there, and many power users run subversion commands from the shell, but we'll use Smart SVN in this lecture. In order to create a working copy on his computer, Dracula has to check out the repository. He only has to do this once per project. Once he has a working copy, he can update it in place to get other people's work. Using Smart SVN, Dracula goes to the Project menu and selects Checkout. The dialog that appears on his screen has two required fields. The first is the URL of the repository, which tells Subversion where to look for the master copy. The second specifies where Dracula wants the working copy put on his computer. After filling them both in, he clicks, Smart SVN opens a connection to the server, checks that Dracula is allowed access to the repository, then creates a new directory on his computer and copies files into it. Once the checkout is complete, SVN makes a bookmark for the project. As in a standard file browser, double-clicking on this and on the directories inside it opens things up and displays their contents. Dracula can find out more about the history of the project using Subversion's log command. When he clicks on the log button, SmartSVN displays a summary of all the changes made to the project so far. This includes the revision number, the name of the person who made the change, the date the change was made, and whatever comment the user provided when the change was submitted. As you can see, the Monsters project is currently at revision 6, and all changes so far have been made by the mummy. While we have this dialog open, notice how detailed the comments on the updates are. Good comments are as important in version control as they are in coding, because without them, it can be very difficult to figure out who did what, when, and why. You can use comments like changed things or fixed it if you want, or even no comments at all, but you'll only be creating trouble for your future self. A couple of cubicles away, Wolfman also runs SmartSVN to check out a working copy of the repository. He also gets version 6, so the files on his machine are the same as the files on Dracula's. Unfortunately, he then has a bad hair episode and has to take a short break. While Wolfman is calming down, Dracula decides to add some information to the repository about Jupiter's moons. Using his favorite editor, he creates a file in the Jupiter directory called moons.txt and fills it with information about Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. After double-checking his data, he wants to commit the file to the repository so that everyone else on the project can see it. The first step is to add the file to his working copy. This isn't the same as creating it. Dracula has already done that. Instead, adding the file tells Subversion to start keeping track of changes to that file. It's quite common, particularly in programming projects, to have backup files or artifacts of compilation in a directory that aren't worth storing in the repository. This is why version control requires you to explicitly tell it which files are to be managed. Once he has told Subversion to add the file, Dracula can go ahead and commit his changes to the repository. He clicks Commit, adds a meaningful comment, and then clicks Continue. Smart SVN establishes a connection and copies his changes over to the master. The version number has now changed from 6 to 7. Notice that this version number applies to the whole repository, 
not just to the files that have changed. Version numbers always refer to snapshots of the entire repository. So if you say version 119 of a file, that is always going to be the same as version 119 of any other file or directory in the repository. The next morning, when he's back in human form, Wolfman starts work once again. He runs SmartSVN and does an update. SmartSVN tells him that a new file has been added to the repository, and Wolfman's working copy is now up to date with version 7, which is the current head, or most recent, revision. Looking in the new file, jupyter moonstxt Wolfman notices that Dracula has misspelled Callisto. It's supposed to have two L's. Wolfman goes ahead and edits that line of the file. He also adds a line about Amalthea, which he thinks might be a good site for a secret lair, despite its small size. He then commits his changes to create version 8 of the repository. Later that night, when Dracula wakes up and starts working again, the first thing he wants to do is get Wolfman's changes. Before clicking Update, though, he clicks on the Log button to see who has done what. He's curious what Wolfman changed, so he selects Moons.txt and asks SmartSVN to show him the changes. SmartSVN brings up a double panel display that uses color to show insertions, changes, and deletions on a line-by-line -line basis. After checking them over, Dracula is satisfied, so he dismisses this view and does the update. This is a very common workflow. Check to see what has changed in the repository, check to see if it's going to get in your way, and if it's not, pull those changes down to your machine. It's worth noticing here how important Wolfman's comments about his changes were. It's hard to see the difference between Callisto with 1L and Callisto with 2, even if the line containing the differences has been highlighted. Without Wolfman's comments, Dracula might have wasted time wondering if there actually was a difference or not. In fact, Wolfman should probably have made two separate commits, since there's no logical connection between fixing a typo in Callisto's name and adding information about Amalthea to the same file. Just as a function or program should do one job, and one job only, a single commit to version control should have a single logical purpose so that it's easier to find, understand, and if necessary undo later on. In our next episode, we'll take a look at the workflow when changes conflict. <laughs>